everyone, welcome to another episode of the Creepy Fox Podcast, the show and the series where we go ahead and relive and retell true scary subscriber stories that have been sent in by amazing people just like yourselves. And hey, we got another good one for y'all today. We're covering true scary Christmas stories that have been shared by all of you. These stories revolve around Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, and the encounters you've had with some pretty creepy and very scary people. It's our hope that after you listen to these stories, you'll be more aware of your surroundings. But hey, just wanted to remind you all that for the entire month of December, I'm bringing back the Christmas Fox design. You can check it out right below the video player in the little merch shelf, or by checking the link in the description below. Any and all proceeds will go to continuing to make amazing content for all of you and fund future projects. Thanks. Now, on to today's episode. Enjoy. Is it really the end of the year already? Where did 2021 go? One moment it's January and I'm taking down my Christmas lights. Next thing I know, my husband and I are putting them back up as we enter December. It is a great time to spread cheer and be with family as you look back on all you accomplished. Maybe even do some volunteering at the local homeless shelter. Or even adopt a family's Christmas list who doesn't have much money to buy their kids gifts. I guess anything really to spread some joy, huh? I guess those are just some positives. Looking back, however, has reminded me of the real-life trauma I faced 10 years ago on Christmas Eve that even today still haunts me. Now, at the time, I was 28 years old, and I was 5 months pregnant with our first daughter. We lived in the butt middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, on some farmlands that never got any traffic. Neighbors are quite spread apart and it's very rare you hear any humans, unless you actually drove into town. It's here there's a huge Walmart where you see pretty much everyone. Really a gathering spot if you will if it wasn't Sunday and we weren't at church. Speaking of church, my husband that evening, it being Christmas Eve, was at our local church's small festival they were holding in their parking lot, dressed up as Santa Claus, helping some of the locals give out gifts to families, as well as feeding them. Meanwhile, I was at home making food for when he would return. I remember specifically I was making his favorite, turkey dinner with some stuffing, mashed potatoes and gravy, and some apple pie. At around 9pm, my husband gave me a call and said he was on his way home and would be there in approximately 10 or so minutes. He also asked me if I could go ahead and unlock the back door so that he could just step in really quickly. It was raining that evening. And considering he didn't have an umbrella, he didn't want to get soaked, and possibly sick. Made sense. So I got up from the kitchen chair where I sat watching some YouTube videos, and I make my way over to unlock said door. Easy enough. Fast forward a few minutes and I head toward the restroom so that I could brush my teeth, seeing as I was about ready to head to bed anyways, I just needed to warm up my husband's food. Footsteps were soon heard coming from my kitchen and part of me jumped for joy thinking, yay, hubby's back, and I don't have to be all alone. Mind you, I also heard the sound of a car door closing just outside my home moments prior. With teeth washed, and hands cleaned with warm soap and water, I stepped into the hallway, where just a mere seconds later, it is made evident to me that something is clearly wrong. Who I heard entered my home wasn't my husband. Not even something innocent like a neighbor's cat, or maybe even hopefully just the sound of the wind. No, in my house was not just one, but two home intruders, both dressed up in your traditional burglar's clothing, dressed in all black, with ski masks hiding their identity and expressions. I must have stood there for about a solid three seconds in pure fear, but they felt like an eternity, as the two spot me and then start to give me commands. Come over here, and don't dare make any sudden movements, or call the cops, one of them said. There was just something so hypnotic and calming about their voices that almost made me agree with them. However, I snapped out of it when I can see one of them clearly grasping a handgun, and it's now I make a beeline toward our bedroom. That felt like forever, but now I'm in my room, 
I feel a lot safer with this wooden barrier in between us. But what's to stop the two from breaking their way in? I nervously thought to myself, as I can feel my heart beat out of my chest, and sweat begin to fall down my cheeks. That was very possible. Open the door, or we'll shoot our way in. I can still clearly remember hearing one of them say, as I remember in that moment, the shotgun that's under our bed, fully loaded and ready to be used under emergencies just like this. If these two dared make their way into the bedroom, both would be dead in a matter of seconds, and I would have quite a lot of explaining to do to the police. Not that I really should have had to, considering these two were the ones who broke into my home, not vice versa. I guess I'm getting too ahead of myself, aren't I? Using the most intimidating voice I could muster up, I yell at the two that I have a loaded shotgun, and if they dared to try to break into my room, I would have no problem shooting in their direction. Thank God that by some miracle, those words resonated in their heads, because the kicking and knocking they do at my door soon comes to a halt, and then I heard them both whisper to one another. I don't exactly remember what they said specifically, since it was hard to make out what was being said behind the door. But I do remember the sound of the footsteps as they're now growing quieter. Less than 30 seconds later, I hear the sound of a car start up, and then just a few moments after that, things grow silent, with only the sounds of the rain hitting the roof above. I let out a small breath of relief, but I was still sweating as I then reached for my phone and called my husband. He's absolutely caught off by surprise and I'm asking him where he was, since it seemed he was running late. He tells me he was helping out an elderly couple, but was now just about to turn the corner to enter our long driveway. He did tell me that he saw a black unmarked SUV drive past him in a hurry, and he asked if I knew who it might have been. I was breathing so heavily and hyperventilating like crazy that I struggled to get the necessary description out to him that the house was just broken into by a couple of burglars. Anyways, my husband, who was still dressed up as Santa Claus, called the cops for me, and once they arrived, I was finally able to breathe a sigh of relief. Unfortunately, it does suck to inform you all that those two who broke into my home have, since to this day, never been caught, and I don't know their identities and their true motives. Though, do we really need to know their motives? It already seemed they were up to no good. All they made off with was the jar of money we had in our kitchen, roughly $500 in savings, and of course my innocence of being home alone. We moved away a couple of years later, and luckily we have never had anything like this happen to us again. It does suck that I have to always keep an eye open when sleeping or alone with my daughters, since I do feel like someone might be trying to break in at any moment but I have the comfort of having training in self-defense. We have a lot of guns in the house, two large dogs, a security system, and cameras too. Needless to say, don't ever try messing with us again, because it won't end well for you. Edit. Merry Christmas, Creepy Fox, and to everybody else who listens to his videos. Much love to y'all this holiday season. It's Christmas Day, 2009, in southern Louisiana. My little brother and I spend the whole entire morning opening up Christmas gifts, drinking hot cocoa, and watching movies with our parents, just enjoying the overall feeling and satisfaction of happiness and comfort. After spending the majority of the day lazying around, my brother and I decide to test out the new bicycles we were gifted and head out on a ride across town. We rode by our school, the park, the town square, and even by the ice rink we had just been at a couple of nights before with some friends. After riding around for approximately 40 minutes, my brother and I come up with the idea of going back home using a trail that shoots us out just a few blocks from where we lived. It was often here we walked our dog on the weekends, and even after school. As expected, the trail was empty. And those few miles of riding down the dirt trail, with the wind pressing against our cheeks, felt so relaxing and wholesome. On the last stretch of the trail, my brother and I decided to take a quick break and take some pictures by a tiny lake where there are some ducks. I always liked ducks, 
and so we tried calling out to some like we were some sort of duck whisperers, failing miserably at making fools of ourselves in the process. Unfortunately, however, it seemed our calls were answered by not just someone, but a group of someones who apparently had no interest in our shenanigans. Out stepped three homeless men from behind a large set of bushes who looked as if they had seen their better days. Their clothing looked as if it was about to fall apart, being filled with stains and holes. Their hair was messy and nappy, and one of them actually reminded me of ex-WWE wrestler Braun Strowman. He had those same beady eyes and long beard with a hair and a ponytail. He was also ginormous, easily towering over me, my brother, and the other two strangers. Immediately, something seemed off about the three, as we can see they had been smoking out of a glass pipe, most likely something illegal. My brother and I apologized for the interruption, and we start to walk away heading toward the opposite end of the little lake. We did end up hearing one of them curse at us, and then one of them said that we were interrupting their play session, whatever that meant. Anyways, we were sent packing, if you will, because one of the guys actually had the nerve and the audacity to point a revolver in our direction. Thank God it seemed as if there were no bullets in there, as they never did fire. But I can't tell you how scary it feels to have a weapon like that pointed in your general direction. Sure, we were quite a bit of a ways from where they stood, but that bullet could have easily have traveled and either hit me or my brother. Needless to say, we got back on our bicycles and immediately ride back home, calling 911 in the process. Cops were sent out there to investigate, and from what I recall, they did arrest one of them for being in possession of a firearm, and of course the illegal substances. We have since never encountered those three ever again, which is nice, but that still doesn't stop me from looking back every year and thinking about the time that my brother and I could have possibly a bit the dust while out on a bicycle ride on Christmas afternoon. One of the most exciting parts about growing up in a large family was the holiday season. Christmas was perhaps the main event of the year where the entire family meets up at grandma's house and us kids get flooded with endless amounts of gifts from all the adults. Aunts, uncles, grandpas, grandmas, friends of family, yeah, the whole nine yards. It wouldn't be surprising to go back home with at least a couple of hundred dollars in our pockets and a large bag of toys and action figures to accompany it. That still didn't count the gifts that were waiting for us back at home. Trust me, there was plenty of that. Man, I missed those simpler times back in the early 2000s. Why can't life be like that again? Maybe that's just my nostalgia speaking. Speaking of which, seeing as it's Christmas season, why not share this scary experience from one of our Christmas parties back in that time period? It always gets talked about between me and my cousins anytime we get together. Yeah, we still do it today. It's just that now we're the adults and we have the kids to give gifts to. Anyways, this one Christmas party, it's the whole shebang I mentioned just a few moments ago. You have me, my little brother Timothy, and all the cousins too, approximately 20 of them. We were all around 10 to 13 years old, still making us the kinds of kids who like to go out and play. That's what I recall us doing later in the evening once more and more family were starting to arrive at my grandma's house. She lived in a pretty nice area in northern Kentucky with a large field behind her house. I want to say it was roughly 7 p.m. It's quite chilly outside and we're all in the middle of a game of soccer. That's when I recall one of my cousins kicking the ball a little too hard toward me. I was the goalie. This caused the ball to roll into the nearby set of woods. Did I forget to mention there was that too? It's what separated my grandma's house from a couple of the neighbors. Well, okay, maybe it's not really considered a set of woods per se, as it's not that long or deep, but it is enough to where you can't see if something or someone might be hiding in there. In any case, I give chase to the ball and I soon realize I can't see Jack diddly squat. Figures as much. This was a time when cell phones weren't really available, 
so having a small pocket flashlight to light your way wasn't going to happen. Well, I had to go back and tell my cousins we needed a flashlight. The oldest one had to retrieve it. As I stood there with my back against all the trees, looking at the rest of my family running around and telling them to be patient. Gotta love the younger ones who can't wait. Moments after I turned my back, I ended up hearing the sounds of tree branches breaking and even what sounds like somebody breathing heavily. It did frighten me a bit, and I took a step back, but I calmed down once I tell myself I'm over-imagining everything. Moving forward, my cousin arrives within the minute and we now try again. I shun the flashlight and it reflects off the trees, and it's only a few seconds after that that we see him. There standing behind a tree, no kidding, was this random man with one of the most angriest looks across his face. This was the kind of expression that read, I'm going to kill you. Or maybe something like, hey, I was sleeping, why did you wake me up? His presence alone would have been okay, but what really turned the situation south was when my oldest cousin and I see the guy holding onto a hatchet. Suddenly the man started screaming a bunch of nonsense and he said that he was being chased by interdimensional beings. He even claimed that we were there to take him away. Yeah, it was really weird, not going to lie. Especially when he said he was going to kill us and then began to get closer. That's why we immediately book it and tell everybody to run. The adults were caught off guard, no surprise there. But luckily my dad and some of my uncles take a couple of the rifles in the house and set up a perimeter around the home. You should have seen the change in the atmosphere. One moment there's loud music and everybody's having fun. Next thing you know, it's as quiet as the middle of the desert. And we're all whispering wondering who might be out there. Cops were informed, and after a short search, they do find the man with the hatchet hiding behind my grandpa and my grandma's shed. As it so happened, he was identified as one of the neighbor's oldest sons who was on heavy drugs that evening. He also just so happened to be out that night walking about in the tree line looking for what we learned were so-called interdimensional beings. Luckily, nobody was hurt that evening. However, it didn't stop some of the nightmares I had nights after. We laugh about it now, and maybe that's a little bit mean. But please don't go around taking hard narcotics and then telling people you're going to slice them up with the hatchet you're holding. It's going to get you in a lot of trouble with law enforcement. And your parents too. It was only just a few months ago that I discovered a genre of YouTube videos where narrators like yourself will recount people's scary encounters. For some reason, I find them to be quite intriguing. It is unfortunate that many others go through some pretty messed up scenarios, and mine is no different. But I guess in a way, telling these stories helps people out, if that makes sense. It helps in that it teaches people to be very aware of their surroundings. Sometimes those of us who experience these things don't always think in the exact moment. It's only until afterwards we kick ourselves in the butt and we ask, why didn't we do something different? That's what my entry is all about. And as I share this with the creepy fox and he narrates it, I hope those lessons can be passed on to you. So let me go ahead and turn back the time, 2013, back when I was in college. The semester had just come to a close, and finally I was allowed the time to relax and unwind from so much studying. I recall that semester in particular I was taking all of my upper level courses, and with five jam-packed classes with professors who gave out more homework than the next, it was quite refreshing being able to wake up and just lay in bed and do nothing. That's how everything began. On Christmas Eve, I got a call from my best friend, who were going to call Zoe. Zoe had called just to say hello and ask how I was doing, and to ask what I was up to. I told her I was going to be hanging out with my family at our Christmas Eve party, and she tells me that she was going to spend the night watching movies. You see, she didn't really have family to go back to where she lived out of state, which is why she was one of the students who stayed in the dorm on campus. I felt kind of bad, 
That's why I asked if she wanted to join me at my Christmas party and get away from being so cooped up in her dormitory. Zoe thanked me for the offer, but she said she had actually hurt her foot the other day and was on crutches and wanted to get some rest of her own. Made sense, which is why I didn't push her anymore, but I knew I just couldn't do nothing. So I told Zoe I would come over before my party and bring her some extra food that she could warm up later when she felt like eating. Zoe sounded really excited with that news, and thus the plan was set. Only one issue. I don't know how to drive. Yeah, I was a little late bloomer, so to speak, when it came to driving. I didn't get my license and start driving until I was 24. I was 22 that year. Anyways, I didn't feel like bothering my parents, so I actually decided to take the city bus. That's what I would use to get to and from school either way. And since I had a bus pass from school, the bus ride was always free. So, there I go. I pack up some extra food, put them in Ziplocs, place them into a bag, and I get going. The bus ride was uneventful, with just a few people riding to their locations. I arrive at my usual bus stop and I take about 10 minutes to walk across the street, on campus, and all the way to my friend Zoe's dorm. She was super excited, and she couldn't stop thanking me enough. I do recall her pain was now settling by the time I arrived. She told me that she was forever grateful for me coming all the way out to see her. It wasn't a problem. Fast forward again to another hour later, and the scary encounter was about to begin. I had now bid a good evening to my friend Zoe, and I start to walk back to the bus stop. Luckily, I timed it so I wouldn't have to wait too long. As I pass one of the main buildings near the front entrance of the university, somebody randomly just walks out from the corner of my eye. I almost thought it was my mind playing tricks on me, but when I heard a voice, I knew it was the real deal. There was this random guy, who from what I remember looked to be just like your average ordinary adult, early to mid 40s, wearing a blue sweater, black pants, some random sneakers, and a receding hairline to accompany it all. He started to follow me and ask what I was doing on campus and if I had plans for Christmas. I gave him just a quick, I'm heading home and hoped he would get the idea and leave me alone. But that didn't happen. He kept following me and started to ask more questions. Great, here we go. I began to tell myself in my head as I reached the street light I would need to wait at in order to cross to the bus stop. Want to come back home with me? He ended up saying, just as the light turns red and I'm able to cross. No, nah, I don't think so. I'm good. Thanks for the offer, I say in a snarky remark. I cross, and in those moments it seemed like it worked. He had stopped following me, and I say to myself, Yes, I can focus back to what I was doing, getting back home and not being bothered. Well, that changes because about 30 seconds after I had taken a seat at the bus stop, the man starts to approach me again. Ugh, he just doesn't get the message. Leave me alone, pal, is what's running through my head. Once again, he begins to ask me some more personal questions, and it's at this moment I reached into my purse to grab my pepper spray. I wasn't trying to jump to conclusions, but you just never know. No ordinary man is just going to be following you like this and then slowly inching their way closer. Before I had a chance to react, he all of a sudden gives me a huge hug and then he says he was cold and wanted to share body warmth. I can't tell you how freaked out I got in those moments. Sure, a hug is supposed to be innocent, but by some random stranger you've never met? The smell of cigarettes and body odor definitely wasn't helping either. But that was the least of my concerns, as I start to squirm my way out of his embrace. What he tells me in those moments next made chills run down my spine. If you try running away, I'm going to stab you. I remember letting out a nervous laughter as he then tries to hug me again. At that point, I had stood up and started to back away, now revealing my pepper spray. I know what you might be thinking, why not just run? Sure, I could have done that, but thank God that I noticed just a mere seconds after I stood up, 
The bus is turning the corner and is approaching both myself and this stranger. Suddenly, it's like this realization pops up in this freak's head because he just gets up and then he starts to run back in the way in which he came from. That wasn't before exclaiming, You haven't seen the last of me. Now, I'm not ashamed to say I was shaking so hard and I did my best to fight back tears while the bus driver asked me if everything was okay. After all, I wasn't budging and I was standing there with my pepper spray in one hand and a couple of dollars in the other. I did manage to snap out of my scared mindset and get on the bus, giving a quick explanation that the man said he was going to stab me. The bus driver took those words seriously and immediately locked the doors and got a move on. I did end up reporting the incident to both campus police as well as our city's police department but they never did catch the guy, which is really scary. Was it possible he might have been bluffing that evening? Yeah, that is very possible. Was his hugging necessary? I think we all know the answer to that. No, no it wasn't. Please, I ask people out there, and this goes for both male and female, don't go giving people a hard time and start to follow them. Get a hint, and if that doesn't work, then at least don't try hugging or even touching the person. Could I have done things differently? Absolutely, I could have. But it's a lesson and an experience you learn from, and you make sure to never repeat it again. By the way, I did make it back home safely that evening. However, I had my dad pick me up at the bus station, since I was too scared to walk home by myself. Over the years, I've had some situations where I've had to deal with creeps and freaks. It is a shame, and unless you've been in a similar situation, then you just don't really know how it feels. The best way I can explain encountering creepy people is it almost is a sense of disbelief. I mean, you're taught stranger danger growing up, and you do see things in movies and TV shows, but in real life, no way right? Well, as December is upon us, I was reminded of one of my experiences in particular from when I used to work at a video rental store. Yeah, they don't really exist these days. They're very rare and hard to come by. With that said, let me go back a while to when they were more common. I'm talking Christmas Eve of 2008. The Nintendo Wii had just launched a year before. And even up to that point, we were getting lots of kids and families who would come up to rent a Nintendo Wii games alongside Christmas classics. I was working that morning. Luckily, I was being given time and a half, rare for such a small family-owned video rental store. I was also fortunate that we would be closing around 2 p.m., so I didn't have to worry about being there the whole day. Everything was pretty calm at this store. Some decent foot traffic at the start, but about an hour before closing, I was really starting to get anxious. Not only because I wanted to go home already, step into the shower, and then enjoy some amazing food later that night, but there was this homeless man who kept entering and exiting the store. I wasn't sure what his issue had been. I wasn't trying to judge, but something about his presence just gave me these really bad vibes. Again, I wasn't trying to be a jerk and look down on his circumstances. Most homeless people are actually pretty chill. But yeah, when I asked him if he needed anything on one of the times he came in, he just walked up to me and said he had everything that he needed. I wasn't sure what he meant for a couple of seconds, but when I saw him staring at my chest, I knew exactly what he was referring to. Typical creep. But so far, nothing super scary. I did tell him in this moment he needed to leave as he was being a disturbance, and this is when he says no. And not just an ordinary no, one that was then followed by the words you would expect out of that one episode of Spongebob, Sailor Mouth, without all the dolphin sounds of course. I don't know why that came to my mind right now, but it was hilarious so I'm including it in my write-up. Anyways. After cursing me out and me just standing there trying to hold back my anger, he leans forward to me, changing his demeanor from angry to calm, and then whispers, You can make it up to me by spending some time with me in that back room of yours. 
I would rather not use the same words I remember he said since I want to keep this entry PG, but I was pretty much taken aback. I now had enough. I told him I was calling the cops, and then again, his anger returned. The little displays on my countertop with some DVDs, popcorn bags, and candy stood no chance as he then pushes them over and starts to reach towards me. I pretty much booked it out of the store, seeing as he was now chasing me down, and I run next door where there was a Vons. Just imagine this college kid screaming like a lunatic being chased by a random homeless guy saying he wanted to have his way with me. Not exactly fun. Thanks to some good Samaritans who came over to us, the homeless man for yet again another time changes his demeanor, telling the people we were related and that he was just playing a game with me. Obviously, nobody believed his lie. The man pretty much turned back, tucked his tail between his legs so to speak, and runs out of the Vons talk about a crazy experience for sure. I ended up calling the owner. Meanwhile, some people from Vaughn's kept me company. I closed up the store just fine that afternoon, and I remember my manager telling me he would make sure the homeless man wouldn't bother me again. I saw the homeless man from what I remember, maybe a week after the incident, but he had never entered the store, nor got anywhere near me. After that week, he was gone. Hopefully, he ended up realizing his mistakes and pursuing a normal life. But who knows? One can hope, right? By the way, Merry Christmas to every single one of you, and Happy Holidays. This is actually a story that comes from my grandma back when she was living in Mexico. She's currently living here with me, my mom, and dad in the United States and she's never been happier. This entry will be coming from her perspective, but of course I'll be the one writing it out for her. So this happened to her on Christmas Day, 2007. It was a tradition of hers to make tamales and pozole for neighbors on Christmas Day, and that was no different that year. She at the time was living with my grandpa, but he was in town that day taking care of some business for his ranch. By mid-afternoon, my grandma finally had finished making food. She was now sitting in her living room watching some telenovelas. My grandpa still hadn't returned at that point. Well, considering that my grandparents are old-fashioned and left the door unlocked, my grandma expected to see my grandpa when she heard somebody enter through the kitchen. She got up, but then she stopped in place when she sees this random middle-aged man staring back at her. Nothing really stood out about him and at first she thought that perhaps maybe he might have been a drunk and might have entered the wrong home on mistake. The man stared at my grandma for a few more seconds, before he tells her that he needs to use her phone, and that she's to remain quiet. My grandma was of course hesitant about his demands, but she's a sweetheart, thus she allowed him to make a call without asking further questions. My grandma then next described the man telling somebody on the phone that he had just completed the task he was assigned to, that he was needing to be picked up. Just imagine hearing something like that. Well, my grandma decided to offer the man some food and even drink and head to the kitchen, but all of a sudden the man's behavior changes. He takes out a handgun from his jacket and then tells my grandma not to make any sudden movements or leave his sight. She stood there completely frozen thinking this was where she met her end, on Christmas Day. Thank the Lord that the man never acted upon his actions, as he puts the gun away, and then tells my grandma that he was never here, and not to tell the cops of his sudden arrival. My grandma agreed, before the man continued to stare in her direction, then toward the front window. This was back and forth, with the man reminding my grandma not to run. He stood there for what seemed like ages, but was only maybe five minutes. Eventually, my grandma recalls seeing a car pull up to her house, and the man steps outside, but not before saying something she would never forget. Thank you for cooperating with what I said. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been so lucky. The man exits her house, gets into a getaway vehicle, and is never seen or heard from again. My grandma, as you would expect, was not only frightened, 
but she was confused to why the man chose her house of all places to make a phone call. What was the deal with completing his task? Well, considering he did have a gun, it couldn't have been a good thing. My grandpa did arrive about 20 minutes after the incident, and they did go to the police. However, nothing ever came up in the investigation. So, anyways, that's pretty much my grandma's story. A scary experience that never leaves her side, and it's a reminder to her, and us, that anything can happen in life. This actually happened last Christmas, so it's still pretty fresh in my mind. For quick context, I'm male, 17 years old, and I live in Fairbanks, Alaska. That night, I was playing some of the new video games my parents had gifted me earlier that morning during Christmas breakfast. I was playing Black Ops Cold War while I was listening to some music, and before I knew it, it was approaching midnight. My parents had already gone to bed, and I too was starting to get a bit sleepy from slaying zombies. Plus, my ears were beginning to ring a bit. I've had this bad habit of listening to music really loudly, so that night when I started to hear noises after I took off my earphones, I thought that it was my ears playing tricks on me. However, as I turned the TV off, it allowed my hearing to settle with the sound of my little heater humming in the corner of my room, I started to hear a very distinct sound. A sound of footsteps. Footsteps that were crunching on the snow just outside our home. Now, we don't have any pets of any kind, so it's not like my parents had to take any sort of dog outside. Plus, there wouldn't really be a reason for them to be out there. It was freezing. There was the possibility of it being a neighbor, and that's what I wrote it off as at first. However, about a minute later, I ended up hearing the sound of scratching at my window. It definitely caught me off guard. So as a precaution, I grabbed the baseball bat that's in my closet, and I slowly approached the curtains. I only stood there for about 10 seconds, but it was feeling like I was in the twilight zone or something, because it felt like hours. Eventually, as I can still hear noise, I gather the courage to swing open my curtains. What I'm looking at was frightening. A random man dressed up in heavy set winter clothing, trying to open my window with a knife in his hand. That was very unsettling, and seeing the screen off my window pretty much explained everything to me. He was trying to break in. Let me inside. I'm friends with your parents. I just talked to them. And they asked me to check the windows. I recall he said to me. I think that's the best he could come up with in that moment because he said it in a very nervous fashion. I pretty much booked it to my parents' room and woke up both my mom and dad, telling them there was a random stranger outside my room with a knife. Going further to explain this screen to the window was cut and was now missing. My dad ends up grabbing his pistol from the nightstand drawer and rushes outside to find the man trying to open the back door. My dad recounts this part to me, which I'm writing down for him. The man tells my dad he thought the house was empty, before just suddenly running off and disappearing into the night. We did call the police, but they never caught the guy. Talk about freaky. Imagine some random man armed with a knife trying to break into your home, and then acting all innocent like he wasn't doing anything. It's not really something you expect in the night in the middle of Fairbanks. Sure, there is quite a bit of crime heard about here from time to time, but it's usually countered with homeowners, homeowners like us, who have guns for protection. As the old saying goes, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. In the traditional sense, this might not be under the category of scary. However, as it was still something pretty insane and it did happen on Christmas a couple of years ago, I wanted to share it with you anyways. It's a sad reminder in today's environment where people have no respect for others or their property. So it was 2019 on Christmas Day. I decided to go visit my cousin who was working at Starbucks that morning. It was a tradition that up to that point I had done for two years straight. He was very happy to see me as he was unable to make it to the Christmas Eve party we had thrown the night before. 
After taking my order and talking to him in between customers, I went to sit outside so I could enjoy the nice chilly morning and my warm cup of coffee. I brought my laptop with me too, and I took the time to do some online shopping with the gift cards I had been gifted. It was no more than 20 minutes of sitting there, the Starbucks having a decent amount of people, that I began to notice somebody going up to the tables and asking for money. I was familiar with this homeless man in particular, who was notorious for getting into fights with people, and one time when I was at the Starbucks, police actually had arrived to break up an altercation between him and another customer. I tried not to pay attention to him since there were people around me. However, when he came up to my table, I started to get this really bad feeling. I asked what he wanted, and he just stared at me as if I was speaking in another language. It was very uncomfortable. Then, in one quick swoop, he grabs my phone, which was lying next to my laptop, and had my earphones plugged into them, and then he takes off running. That's not of course without pretty much ripping the earphones out of my ears, which did hurt a little bit. Well great, I was robbed. This sudden event was about to escalate however, as the man who was sitting at the table next to me got up and gave chase to this creep. I witnessed as he pretty much speared the guy like you would see Goldberg do, and both dropped to the floor, phone included. I caught up to both of them as some other people are now walking over, and what happens next was very chilling. I guess it's the part that is a bit scary. The homeless man puts his hand into one of his trench coat pockets, and then struggles to get something out. Seeing this, the good Samaritan who tried to grab the phone back focuses his attention on that arm, and then goes for an arm hold. It's a good thing he did that because what we found out was in that pocket gave us all the chills. A knife. Thankfully, he wasn't able to use it, and when the cops got there, they did end up handcuffing and taking the man away. I was given my phone back. However, the screen got cracked. A bit of a shame, but it's a material object. Even if the nice man who went after my phone hadn't done it, it would have been better than seeing somebody get potentially stabbed in the middle of a parking lot. So maybe not so scary coming from my perspective, but it must have been absolutely nightmarish for my new friend. As a word of advice, if you are going to public locations, especially nowadays, make sure you leave your expensive products at home. Also, it might be better not to be a hero. You might get seriously hurt. Remember, material objects are replaceable, but not you. If you were to tell me I was going to have a creepy encounter on Christmas and on vacation of all times, I wouldn't believe you. I mean, how could that be? Well, as you're going to find out, the world isn't safe from creepy people. Not that I should have to tell you that. Let's rewind to the year 2019, winter break. I had decided to head to Anchorage, Alaska to spend the holiday with my cousin Max alongside my aunt and my uncle. Christmas Eve came and we ate like kings, stuffing our faces with turkey and ham. By the next morning, we were thrilled to find a multitude of gifts under our names, some that were actually shipped to me by my parents and some from my aunt and uncle. By the way, in case you're wondering why my parents didn't come along, it's because this vacation was my idea. They weren't able to take too much time away from work, and my plan was to stay for a little over two weeks. Anyways, by 1pm, Max and I had come up with the brilliant idea of going to downtown Anchorage and playing Pokemon Go. You see, I was still really into the game back then, and there was one Pokemon I was seeking that was very hard to find in the real world. Pachirisu, a squirrel Pokemon from the fourth generation. Those of you who just got the new Diamond and Pearl remakes have probably gotten your hands on one already. In Pokemon Go, it's not so easy. Pachirisu can only be found in Alaska, the very northern parts of Canada, and the very northern parts of Russia. Being a Southern California boy, there was no way I was going to miss my chance. So, we had my Uncle Chris drive us over to downtown Anchorage and we got dropped off in front of the mall. 
My uncle tells us he was going to head to a friend's house to drop off some extra food, and then he would pick us up within an hour. Perfect. With our thermos filled with extra piping hot coffee, we began to walk around downtown Anchorage and started our quest. The first 20 minutes resulted in the typical sightings, albeit with a mix of winter-themed Pokemon that were spawning that year too. No sign of Pachirisu. Such a shame. I started to think that we were going to have to come back another day at the rate we were going. Thankfully, that wasn't the case, because when we circled around back to the little park area next to the mall, the game's nearby Pokestops updated, and alas, we were shocked to see two nearby Pokestops had updated with the silhouette of Pachirisu. How exciting. I remember jumping for joy like I was a little kid again, and I started to run. Spoiler alert, I ended up slipping on my butt and dropping my coffee on the concrete. Served me right for not remembering the frozen floor in that moment. Luckily, I didn't get seriously hurt. But now there was coffee everywhere, and it was gone. Oh well. We get to the Pokestop in question, and we find our little furry friend. I decided not to take any chances. I gave it a golden raspberry, used an Ultra Ball, and did a curve throw and caught him right away. Nice. What could possibly go wrong now? I got what I came for. All of a sudden, we were interrupted by a lady who was talking random gibberish. It was sort of weird, and we had to ask her to repeat herself, but she then started to speak to herself. Okay, that's strange. We continued to walk, but then she calls out to us. We stopped for whatever dumb reason, and she now puts her arm around mine and gives me an embrace. Okay, strange lady, I don't know. What's your problem? The lady started to ask us if we wanted to join her and her friends, as they had some extra Christmas gifts, and some Mary Jane. Hey, those were her exact words, not mine. We thanked her for the offer, but we tell her we don't smoke, and this seems to upset her. She insists we come follow her, as she starts to drag me in the opposite direction. I won't lie, she was quite strong for her size. Both my cousin and I are your average ordinary 17 year olds, about 170 pounds, 5 foot 10 and 5 foot 11 respectively. It's like her strength didn't care about this. Starting to get a bit weirded out, I force myself out of her grasp and then my cousin and I start to walk away. Moments later, we heard her behind us as the lady called out to someone. These two behemoth of men come walking out of a nearby alleyway and then they start to approach us. They too start to insist we follow them, and it's at this moment we begin to walk even faster. Hey, hand over your phones and your wallets, one of the men says, as he reveals a pocket knife. Won't lie to you, that was very unexpected. We start to run as fast as we can, try not to slip in the process, and as we reach one of the street lights, we hear someone from a truck yell, we looked over, and we saw a man step out of said truck. Was it possible this guy was in on the robbery? No. Luckily, that wasn't the case. He was just some random good Samaritan who happened to be in the right place at the right time to give these three a good scare. Needless to say, the three creeps stopped following us, and then run back in the other direction, running into the alleyway. Serve them right to try to rob us. Fast forward to once the coast is clear and the man in the truck kept us company as we called our uncle to come pick us up. We did talk with the Anchorage Police Department and they told us they would be on a lookout for the three creeps. Meanwhile, if any more details were needed, they would give us a call. That call never came through, so we aren't exactly sure what ended up happening with those three. My cousin has told me that he hasn't seen or heard of anybody in those two years that this happened get robbed by three random people in downtown Anchorage, so it's our hope they have since learned their lesson. This was a few years ago, some days before Christmas. I was 20 at the time and I was returning home for winter break. In order to get home, I took an Uber from my college campus which would drop me off at the train station. From here it was 5 hours north and I got home. 
Under normal circumstances, the ride over would be uneventful, say apart from talking to some fellow passengers. I had made the trip two times already, and it always went peacefully. But the reason why I wanted to send this one in is because something sort of strange happened along the way. However, if there was one good thing about this experience, it's that I made some pretty awesome friends. Okay, so I head over to the train station just fine, bored, and took my seat next to a nice family. We talked for a bit and I learned that they were also taking a trip to visit family for Christmas. They were a mom, dad, and two little boys. For them, it was their first time ever using the train, and they were beyond ecstatic to be seeing the countryside for the first time. Me having so many little cousins and having experience with the kiddos, I talked to these kids and told them some Christmas stories. I think the parents really appreciated that. Anyways, after a bit of talking, I settled in with some headphones and music and took a nap. Three hours in, we ended up making a stop so that I could transfer to my next train for the rest of the trip. This family was going to a different train that would be leaving shortly after mine. So I wished them safe travels and they head over to wait for their train. Meanwhile, I spend approximately 25 minutes sitting at a train station coffee shop as I wait. As I sat there drinking my Americano and having a muffin, a man, presumably homeless, walked up to me wanting to know if I had some extra change. I gave him a couple of dollars out of kindness and thought that he would just leave but instead he takes my kind gesture as an invitation to sit with me. Weird, but so far he hadn't done anything wrong. So far. Hey, where are you heading? Maybe you'd like to spend some time with me at my place, he said with a creepy smile. Well, at least he was straightforward, I'll give him that. I appreciate that, sir, but I'm going to see my family. He then started mumbling to himself before he says, Hey, would you like to have some of this with me? Come on, let's head to the back of the train station. He takes out a small ziplock with what looked to be like some sort of powder. Now, I'm not dumb and I could already tell this guy was a junkie, so I told him I was fine. He, however, kept insisting and insisting and I was starting to get a bit creeped out. Thus, I get up and start heading to my train, which, by the way, hadn't arrived. This creep now begins to follow me calling me various vulgar names and telling me how I would be sorry for ignoring him. For real, it was starting to grow a bit concerning because some of the things he was describing, which were pretty messed up. Thankfully, a familiar face had caught wind of my new stalker buddy, the nice man from the train, the family I met. They had heard this guy calling me names and they walked over to approach him. Hey mate, believe her alone, don't you have better things to do? He says as I walk over next to him. Mind your own business, this doesn't concern you. He then takes out a pocket knife which now had the attention of others. Look, we aren't wanting trouble. Put that thing away. The creep completely ignored him and went mad. He charged toward this dad as I heard his family cry out for the police. No lie. He literally countered by pulling out a suplex like you'd see in wrestling. He then put him into a submission hold as some security guards came to break it up. Thankfully, they took this stalker away and everybody was okay. I thanked him profusely, to which he told me he was just doing his part to help out a friend. By the way, I questioned him on his awesome wrestling skills and he told me he was actually a pro wrestling coach. Seriously, it's so cool how you meet the most amazing people when you travel. Anyways, when my train arrived, the kiddos his wife, and himself all gave me a hug and a proper send-off, and I eventually arrived home to my family a couple of hours later. So that was the time I had an encounter with a creep at a train station, and a wrestler, I'm going to call him that by the way, tagged in, did his finishing move so to speak, did the 1-2-3, and took the win. So this happened on Christmas Eve of 2005. For reference, I was 27 years old and this is from the perspective of a female. I worked for a Sizzler's restaurant as a hostess and I'd gotten off of work at approximately 6pm. A friend of mine who we're going to call Maria invited me to attend her Christmas Eve potluck she was throwing at her apartment. I'd already agreed to go, but as I'd gotten so busy with work I didn't get a chance to pick up any food, 
let alone make anything. So I gave her a quick call and I asked her if there was anything in specific she might need. She told me they needed some chips and soda, thus I went to a Vons on the other side of town to go pick them up. The reason I chose that Vons in particular was due to the friendly staff. They always said hello to me, and even the elderly woman that worked at the cash register that I had known as a little girl gave me hugs and offered me discounts anytime they were available. Anyways, when I entered the Vons it was pretty busy, with lots of last minute shoppers picking up food and pastries from the bakery section. I opted to pick up some cookies while I was here and I grabbed mine and my friend Maria's favorite cookies, chocolate chip. As I made my way toward the aisle of chips, my shopping cart jingling along with the music playing over the intercom, somebody calls out my nickname. Now here's the thing with my nickname. The only people who refer to me as such are very close relatives and friends. Therefore, I expected to turn around and see one of them. Too bad I'm welcomed with the chills. Hey there. A long time no see. It was my obsessive ex-boyfriend who had cheated on me, only for him to want to come back into my life after he had done it. For this story, we're going to refer to him as Lewis. Oh, hey there, Lewis. Merry Christmas. I then proceeded to walk away from him. Yeah, I guess acknowledging his presence wasn't exactly the best idea. But then again, he was going to cause a scene regardless of me responding or not. Wait, come back. I just wanted to ask you if you were willing to go out with me again. The absolute nerve, I'll tell you. This time, I ignored his advances and I secured a couple of bags of laced potato chips. Then I hurried along to the soda aisle. He follows me there, and all the while he keeps begging me for attention. The final straw was when he grabs me and then tries to give me a hug. I stepped on his foot as hard as I could, and that sent him off into a fit of rage, one I had been very familiar with. He starts to throw soda bottles from the shelves and begins cursing at me, calling me various things I'd rather save your ears from hearing. I proceeded to grab my pepper spray from my purse and I told him to back away or I was going to use it. He didn't care. He continued to act in his rage, catching the attention of a customer. A dad who was there with his two young kids who started crying over my ex-boyfriend scaring them. It's scary, but my ex ended up grabbing a glass of wine and then smashed it into the shelf. Using the sharp end, he told the man to back up, as he was going to have me one way or another. More customers began walking over. There are now approximately 10 people in front of him, and 10 people behind him. Even with that, he shouted at the top of his lungs that he would go after anybody who got in his way, and our supposed romance, that in his head, hadn't ended. Thankfully, the dad I mentioned, who was ex-Marines, manages to disarm my ex, not before getting a couple of scratches on his arm. And finally, the scary ordeal was over. As this was happening, cops had already been called, who showed up just as my boyfriend was exiting the Vons. He was arrested just a short time later, and he was sent to jail. I was very shaken up after the incident, and I almost decided just to cancel my plans but I wasn't going to let Lewis ruin what was going to be a fun night. I went to Maria's party, and soon I put the encounter behind me. All these years later, I have never heard from Lewis again. As Christmas approaches, I do wonder whatever happened with him. I seriously hope he managed to get some help, and he changed his life around for the better. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. As always, if you all enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like rating, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you thought of the episode, and if you're brand new around here, one, hello, and two, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified of any and all future videos coming to the Creepy Fox YouTube channel. Also, I haven't mentioned this in a while, but if you wanted to go ahead and help out, it's completely optional. Uh, you can check right below the video player. Uh, this year I've been running the St. Jude's Children's Research uh, for finding cures for cancer. If you wanted to go ahead and donate even just a dollar, um, you know, if all of you that are watching were to donate just like even a dollar, uh, it would go a long way and it'd be kind of nice to do something like that to raise some more money for uh, the Christmas season uh, because the plan is to go ahead and pretty much just finalize whatever earnings I get at the end of the month 
and then send it over so you know they can go ahead and get those funds and uh, yeah i think that'd be pretty nice but uh, hey how's everybody doing uh let's see right now it's actually i'm recording the christmas stories a little bit earlier I did that uh, the last years too, where I kind of uploaded the Christmas stories a, a little bit early. Uh, it's actually November 30th. As I'm recording this right now, it's uh, it's 10.59 p.m. Uh, I probably will go ahead and uh, still um, record some more stories, because I do have some more stories to record for the episode, so you're kind of getting a little bit uh, behind the scenes, if you will, of me recording uh, before I head to bed. And then I record more stories for the episode. Speaking of episodes, as for the rest of December and the rest of this year, uh, there is a New Year's, New Year's, New Year's, I can't speak, a New Year's Scary Stories video coming later this month. And then depending on what stories I get submitted to me this month, I will do a topic on something or maybe it'll just be like a just a normal scary story subscriber stories where it's just a bunch of different topics in one video uh, so make sure again if you haven't sent in a story please 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 make sure to send in a scary story uh, this year's kind of been a little bit uh, wonky with the uh, submissions that's one of the reasons why you all haven't been getting so many videos from me obviously you know i've been in the hospital and recovering and stuff but uh, you know there's been a lot of time where I'm, you know, I'm feeling okay and I want to upload and record more stories, but I'm not getting any story submissions. And I don't really want to read anything from Reddit because I don't want to repeat stuff and to, you know, have people tune in and be like, hey, I've already heard this story on like a bunch of other channels. So yeah, make sure you go ahead and share a story if you like, and we can go ahead and get that featured on a future episode. But uh, yeah, um, something else I wanted to mention, I actually am going to start doing it now. And this is for my channel members, just to offer them a little bit more since they do help me out. And they're awesome. I wanted to go ahead and start uploading some cool little extras for y'all, along with the early access. So one thing I want to start doing, as you know, I like to uh, work on animation and, you know, there's animation on the way. Uh, I want to start posting like sneak peeks and clips of the animation process and how the episodes and the videos are going. And so if you are a channel member, I'll go ahead and do that for you all so you can get the, the first view of it before it gets uh, put out to the rest of the world when the episode or the video is finished. And then another thing I want to go ahead and do and start is to start including the artwork and the backgrounds that we've worked on for the animation stuff. I've had on offer pretty much just like the thumbnail art for the videos. But I know a lot of people have been requesting like the actual animation, like, you know, my characters, Arya, Tiana, Jamie, Zoe. Uh, there's obviously the character based off of me and then my character, Elias. Uh, so if you are at that level and you wanted to get a certain artwork of one of the art pieces I've had produced, uh, make sure to shoot me a message. Let me know which artwork you want, which you can see on my Instagram account, and I'll make sure to send that your way. So yeah, that's going to go ahead and do it for today's episode. Again, thank you to my wonderful channel members. Thank you to all the amazing normal viewers who watch the videos. Just leaving comments, liking, subscribing, and sharing the channel with other people. That honestly is such a huge help. I can't explain enough just how important it is to share the videos and share the channel with people because unfortunately, as we've seen, YouTube doesn't exactly do the best of job sharing my videos. I look at the viewership and it's dropped quite significantly. Uh, honestly, I've never been a big person about views, but seeing less people uh, watching the videos kind of tells me that, again, YouTube's not doing their best of job sharing it to all of you. And I know there's a lot of you who enjoy these videos, and it is a shame that you don't get them sent out to you. Anyways, that's enough talking from me. Thank you, everybody. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for allowing me to do this for all of you. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care and have yourself an amazing day.